Having the first version of Tomorrow Melon Fail was incredibly difficult. It was humiliating for me. I'd come off the biggest success that you could imagine. I co-founded Jimmy Choo in 1996 when I was 27 years old and Jimmy sold his shares in 2001 and I continued to build the brand. So after 16 years, I decided that, you know what, I'm just young enough to maybe start again. So I decided to leave and set up the Tomorrow Melon brand. As I was leaving Jimmy Choo, I realized the industry was changing. Like the customer was way ahead of where the fashion industry was and that the business was gonna have to operate in a very different way. The only people at the fashion shows were press and buyers. Now everyone sees the fashion shows, so our customers are looking at the product for six months before it gets to the shop floor. So I felt there was like this fatigue around it. So when I left, I wanted to uh, create a new business model, buy now, wear now, and I wanted to do monthly drops of season appropriate product, but I tried to put it through a wholesale channel and it just didn't work. The department stores were not there. They didn't see the crisis that was about to hit them. We were in Bergdorf's, we were in Saks, we were in Nordstrom. They said to me, oh, well, our financial planning is not set up for that. And if you have boots and cashmere on the floor in February, um, and we have spring summer clothes, how's the customer gonna feel? And I said, well, test her. What's wrong with the test? Anyway, they didn't wanna do it. So I realized I had to stop I had to pull all my business out of the wholesale channel and pivot and take this direct to consumer. I had several investors in the first version. Four were very supportive and three were not supportive. I would have had to have taken a down round and they didn't want to take a down round. So they just let it go into the point where we just ran out of money and we had to put it through uh, bankruptcy and then bring in a new investor post bankruptcy. To have something uh, not work was really hard, but I, I was a believer in the ultimate vision, and that's what got me up every day, and that's what get me, kept me coming back to the office. Went out and met with a ton of VCs, and finally uh, met NEA, who were incredible, who also believed in what I was doing, and said, we'll help you and come in to relaunch this, and they funded the new version. Right now we're raising our Series C. We've had 136% growth last year. The company is doing incredibly well. So in version one, I'd hired a lot of people and I take full responsibility for this, who didn't really believe in the business model that I wanted to create and wanted to keep pulling me back. And so I didn't have believers around me. And I think that's really important when you have a startup is you have to have a team of believers.